What is geocaching? Glad you asked. Let me tell you. First, you go to the geocaching.com website and look up the geocaches around your home or wherever you're going to be. Then, you get the coordinates and put them into your GPS receiver. You use the GPS receiver to get you to the location and then you look for the geocache. The cache page will have a description or maybe some hints you can use to help you find the cache. Sometimes it's really well camouflaged to look just like something that really belongs there. You're going to be looking for some kind of container. It could look like these, or bigger like these, or even really tiny like these. But it has to have a log sheet or book for you to sign, so bring a pen. There might also be stuff inside you can use to trade, like little toys and stuff we like to call swag. Sometimes you'll find a trackable item, like a travel bug or a geocoin, or even someone's personal signature items that can be tracked online. So my friends and I are going to tell you a little bit about how GPS works, what you should take with you when you go geocaching, and why this is a great educational activity. Hello, this segment will be called How GPS Works. So first we're going to look at some GPS receivers that you might be familiar with. The first one is the kind you might see in an automobile. The second one is a more of a mobile unit that can be used outdoors, um, fairly weatherproof, with a great antenna and great reception. This one might not be so good outdoors and it's not very durable if it, in case it gets dropped. So in that case we're going to say let's not focus on this one, instead let's focus on this one for the purpose of geocaching. So, what this can do is it can give you specific coordinates of your location on the ground using satellite technology. Up in the sky orbiting the Earth we have around 27 satellites, all of which relay data down to the ground, and these receivers are designed to pick those, those signals up. So, through a system of triangulation, along with uh, some error correction, we have a surefire way of getting our location on the ground within approximately 20 to 30 foot radius. I'm going to go outside now because I want to show you how this works outside. All right, so the purpose for using the GPS, what we really need is a clear view of the sky. The weather doesn't really matter as much as long as it's not an electrical storm. So right now we can get a pretty accurate reading because we've got a pretty open area. But as soon as you go up against a building or under a lot of trees where there's a lot of cover, it's going to affect your reading and you might not be able to find the location you're trying to locate. Now we are closer to our geographical point of interest, which in this case is going to be a virtual geocache point. And what we've done so far is we've actually had the mobile GPS unit acquire acquisition of signal to multiple satellites, and we need at least four for accuracy. And so here you can see, I believe we have about six that we've acquired signal with. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the dark satellites that are the ones that, that we've acquired signal with. And we now, so now we know that we've got a good signal and we're going to go look to see if we can locate the point that we need to find, which we have the coordinates to. Okay, so the point we're looking for is called Leviathan, and it's a virtual geocache point. And here you can see its coordinates. Um, we've got northings and eastings, so we're, uh, you see the north, and then we have degrees, and then minutes and decimal seconds after that to give us a precise location and angle off of the horizon. Okay, so we're going to hit the go to button and that's going to allow us to get some direction and guidance in finding this virtual point. Alright, so what we have here is we have two things. We have the distance up in the upper right hand corner, that that's, tells us how far away we are from the point. And then we've got the directional arrow which um, can sometimes be a little confusing, but for now we know which direction to go, so we're going to do that right now. Looking for a geocache. I see we've got a change in the arrow direction. It's telling us to continue going this direction. How far does it say, Brian? Well, right now it says about 45 to 46 feet. And mm. we've got an arrow that's telling us to kind of go that way, the direction of my thumb. And so we're just going to continue on here and see what it says. We also have to keep in mind that we have some error to deal with. So this might not be accurate to a certain number of feet, but we're moving in the right direction. 15 feet, 11 feet, notice how it's going down really quickly. It looks as though we found our location. We know we're at our virtual location, even with a distance of 7 feet away, we've cleared the hurdle. Right, now that you know what geocaching is, we're going to talk a little bit about what you need to take with you when you go geocaching. The first and most important thing you're going to need is a GPS device. 
Um, we've already talked about different kinds of devices, and so you're going to need your GPS unit, and you're also going to need the coordinates for where you're going. Um, another thing that you're going to need is you're going to probably need um, some good, some good shoes. Um, you can be in a lot of different places, so a uh, good pair of hiking boots is always a good thing to have with you. Um, when you're never sure how long it'll take you or where you're going, a flashlight's always a good thing to take with you. Um, sunscreen. Even on cloudy days, you want to make sure you're wearing plenty of sunscreen so you don't get um, sunburned. A good hat. You're also going to want plenty of uh, water and also some snacks. Um, you also are going to need a piece of, uh, or a pencil or a pen to write on the log when you get there. Sometimes there's no pencils in there, sometimes they're not sharpened, so be sure to take that with you. You're also going to want a token or something to, um, to leave there, because usually with the geocache, if they're the, the larger ones, you take something and you leave something. Little things like a top, um, there's lots of different things you can, you can leave and there's lots of different things you can take. Um, you're going to want to take a camera. Just so you can kind of document where you were and what you did, it's always fun to have those kind of memories. And um, a cell phone's not a bad thing to have as well, um, just so in case something happens, you have a way of communicating with people out there. Um, you also need to have just a desire for adventure and to have a good time. And that's pretty much what you need to go geocaching. important to understand with the educational benefits of geocaching that a geocache or the process of geocache is only limited to your imagination. You can do as little or as much with a geocache. You can uh, change the format as much as your imagination will dictate. The most important part or most important benefit of geocaching would be the engagement piece of geocaching. Students really have the opportunity to become very engaged in the project or the material that you're presenting with them. Geocaching offers that prime opportunity to engage students in a variety of content. It also provides a student-centered approach to the curriculum. The students are making their own rules and going forward with this. Rather than listening to you, they're going and doing it themselves. It also allows for a change of environment, allow the students to get out of the classroom and interact with their environment and their campus and their community. And kinetic learners have a great opportunity for engagement. Team building and organizing principles are critical in implementing geocaching as a group activity. Whether it's formal or informal, they need to work as a team usually to geocache. And they get outdoors, they get moving, they get physical activity. And they are presented with an opportunity to interact with their environment. Geography is at the heart of it. An understanding of latitude and longitude is critical to finding geocaches. Geocaching also develops a geospatial understanding. In conjunction with maps, geocaching is a fantastic way to go. Technology is also at the heart of geocaching. Students are interacting with a GPS unit to find geocaches. They also are preparing and doing online research at geocache.com or whatever place that they need to do the research to solve the puzzle, to get the coordinates, to do all that kind of stuff with their geocache unit. Now, if you want to find out more resources, more information, www.outsidesd.com slash geocaching, we're going to present our list of sources that we have created for this interview into geocaching. So thank you and good night. very much but we can see a little bit if you can look, I look that closely. that was half a bay bridge. That's right it's a little piece of the bay bridge right there going across to San Francisco. Fading off into the fog. Yes so yeah. nice view. That's our geocaching experience for today. Thank Ciao. you. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say? Yeah. What? Uh bye bye. Okay. <laughs>